The UI Toolkit is Unity's new easy and powerful way to create UI. And since Unity 6.2, it now supports world space, which means that for the first time, we can use it as well for us VR developers. Now, in this video, we are going to explore the new sample scene that compares the old and new UI system, learn how to create our first UI with the UI Builder, how to interact with it with Poke and Ray, and finally, how to trigger custom events. But first, look at this awesome mixed reality project that I created where I have an AI assistant that can describe what I'm looking at. This project is the result of my latest exclusive tutorial that you can find on my Patreon with a lot of other exclusive content like the source code of all of my videos. So if you'd like to support my work and get access to these kind of exclusive tutorials, join us, the link is in the description. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing to get started with the new UI toolkit is to make sure that we have Unity version 6.2 install and we can do so over there on the Unity Hub. You can see that I've previously downloaded it here, but if it's not the case for you, you can simply click on Install Editor and install it right over there. Okay, so now that we have this version installed, to quickly get started with our VR UI Toolkit project, I'm going to use Unity's VR sample scene that we can find if we go to New Project. Then make sure to select 6.2 over there. And if we scroll down below, we should be able to see here this VR sample scene. Then we can set a certain project name like UI Toolkit. We can create it as a new local project, select a location, and then simply click on Create Project. Okay, and here it is. Now the beautiful VR sample Unity scene is opened. Now, if you want to learn more about it, I've previously made this video which you will be able to find in the description. So go watch it if you haven't already. But in our case, we are not going to have a look at this scene, but at another scene, which will demonstrate how to use the UI toolkit for VR. To open the scene, we can go to Windows at the top, then to Package Management, Package Manager. There, if we scroll down to the XR Interaction Toolkit, we can click on Samples. And here, down below, we should see the World Space UI, a sample that provides a demo scene and prefab for the UI toolkit. Now let's click on import. Once it is important, we can close this window and we can go to this sample that we just downloaded by going to asset, samples, XR interaction toolkit 3.2.1, which is the version that we have. Then if we double click on it, we can click on the demo scene over there. Okay, and as you can see, this demo scene is pretty straightforward. We only have here an XR origin hands, but we have two sets of UI, one on the left and one on the right. Now, the one on the right is done with the old UI system by Unity. If we select it, it's the UGUI sample. We can have a look at it. And for example, if I go under the UI sample here, we can see that we have the traditional canvas that is set to world space to make this UI part of a world. And if we go under its children, we can have a look at some of the UI elements. For example, we have here this header text that we can update. Hello. We have here a button that we can customize. So everything is pretty simple. We think that we are familiar with, but on the left side, we have the mighty and beautiful new way of doing UI with Unity 6.2 in WorldSpace. It is the UI toolkit. Now, the first thing that you can notice is that instead of having a canvas, we now have a UI document. Now, to show you how this works, let me go under the UI toolkit, grab UI, and here we have the XRI UI document. Now, if we have a look at this component, we have two main elements, the panel settings and the source asset. The panel settings is the type of UI that we have. So if we highlight it in the project window, we can click on it. And there it is. As you can see, this is where we can actually set the render mode to world space or screen space overlay. Now, because we are making VR UI, of course, we want it to be world space. Now, if you go back to the UI document, we can see that the second asset is the most important one. It is the XRI sample document that we can again highlight. And if we double click on it, there you go. This opens the UI builder panel, which is the new way to create a UI with Unity 6.2. And there we go, in the same way, if here I update the text with hello and that I save the UI builder, you can see that it actually updates as well on the Unity side. So now the big question is, how can we actually create new UI with the UI toolkit and how can we interact with it in VR? But first, to prove to you that we can actually interact with the new UI in the same way, let me simply click on play here to show you this sample. Okay, and here we go. So the first thing that we notice is that on the right side, so for the old UGUI system, 
we can interact, as you know, with Book, with Ray, and everything works fine. But if we look at the left side with the new UI system, the good news is that it is the same. We can again interact with both Book and with our Ray. So everything seems consistent. And I'm really happy to see that Unity has made their XR interaction toolkit already work with the new UI. And now that we know that we can see new UI and that we can interact with them, let's see how we can create UI from scratch. Okay, so to create your own UI using the UI toolkit, you can right click in the project, go to create UI toolkit, and then click here on UI document. You can give it a name. I'm going to rename it main UI like so. And we can double click on it to open the magnificent UI builder. So as you can see, there is multiple things on this UI builder. You have here a library containing some UI elements. You have the hierarchy containing the UI that you are using. And you have some style sheet that I will be able to talk about in a minute. But the first step to set up UI is to drag a visual element here on the hierarchy. There you go. This will create kind of a UI area that we can reshape. Now under this UI, we can basically drag anything that we want from under here. The first thing that we want is, for example, to write some text. So let's drag it over there, under, and there we go. Now we have some text appearing that we can actually change its size as well. But if we select this label, we also have here the inspector window, where similarly as the old system, we can tweak what's going on on this particular object. For example, if we go under text here, we can see here that we can change the color of the text. We can change the outline, the shadow. Now, in my case, I'm simply going to increase the size to maybe 50, and I'm going to position the text in the middle, like so. Now, if we want to rename this text, I'm going to rename it UI to kit by double clicking here on the text here on the viewport. And now you can basically, well, mess with everything that you want with here this UI builder. Now, for example, we can clearly create a quick UI by dragging another visual element. And under this visual element, what I want to do is add three buttons. So for this, we can drag one button. We can also increase its size and we can duplicate it three times. But the cool part is that if we go above on the visual element, you can see that the three buttons have aligned properly with kind of a vertical layout that we can actually update from here on the visual element. So for example, if we go under the align, we can say the type of alignment that we want for our button. You can basically choose anything you want. In my case, I will select the value stretch over there and keep it to auto. We can even go to placing and here we can have some fun with the margin, the padding, with anything that you want. But now that we have kind of a basic UI, how can we actually use it as a world space, so as part of a VR world. So for this, let's say if we control S and here put that aside on Unity and try to use this UI on a Unity object. For this, we can go and right click, go to UI toolkit and click on UI document. As you can see by default, the UI document will search for the first available panel settings. And in our case, it is already using the world space panel. If we click on it, this is the world space panel that we firstly highlight and which already has a random mode set to world space, which is perfect. Otherwise, you can create your own custom panel settings by right clicking, going to create UI toolkit and clicking here on panel settings asset. Now, anyway, in my case, I will use this default one. So the last thing that we need to set is the source asset. So let's go back to the asset and simply drag our main UI that we just created over there. And there you go. In just a few seconds, this is what's going on. Well, the UI document has created for us a game object using our main UI. But as you can see, the size is not correct. Now this UI document, we can put it on the side, we can move it, we can rotate it, and we can even update the size. But if we really want to change here the width and height, we can actually do so on the world space dimension over there. And as you can see, we can do anything we want and we can change the size to something we want. For example, 300 by 200, will that work? No, I'm going to maybe a bit higher. And then we can scale it down and put it maybe to the side over there. And there you go. Our beautiful UI is now part. And this is basically how you can quickly set up a world space UI. But now you can get a bit more advanced with the UI builder. For example, if we go back to the UI builder, a thing that we can actually do is create a style sheet for our button. To do this, we can click here and call this one button style. There we go. This will create a USS file that we can also name button style. 
Okay, now that you've created your button style, you can simply drag it on one of your buttons and now you can have some fun with here updating directly this button style on the inspector window. For example, we can go to the text, increase it a little bit. We can go down below on the background and change it to white. We can go to border and increase a little bit the radius like so. And now that we've created our own button style, the good thing is that we can also apply it to the other button as well, simply by dragging it over there. Okay, let's do it again. And now we can see a little bit of the magic from the UI toolkit because we have total control over all of the button from the style. If we select the button style, we can, for example, go to the background color. And if we want to have something else than the white color, we can simply update it right there and it will update it for all of the button as well. But you can override these properties by simply selecting one of the button. And instead of changing the style, you can override this property by dire directly updating this value directly on the object. And so with this kind of behavior, you get the best of both worlds. You have preset that you can quickly apply to multiple elements, but you can override this preset directly on each object. Okay, and finally, the last thing that I want to show you with this awesome UI toolkit is how you can actually create transition when you over or when you click on the object. For that, we are going to click on add new selector and we are going to update what happens when we over our button style by simply writing button style over like so. Now let's press enter and there you go. Now we can simply go a bit down below and on the transform, I'm going to change the scale to 1.03 on all axes. And now if I click again on the previous button style, I can go down below, then click on transition animation and set a certain duration for the animation that we are using on this style. For example, we can do 0.5. Five. And now by doing this setup, we should be able to have a 0.5 transition to the button style over when we over one of the button using the button style. But to test this, we can simply click either on preview. And as you can see, it works directly. We can see that all buttons are changing when we are overing them. And we can have some fun with that because if we select back the button style, we can even go to the background and for example, we can change the color to red like this. And there you go. You can see what happens for the button style that did not add a background color override like the first one. We are able to apply this transition as well. And basically, this shows you an overview of how you can build your own UI with the new awesome UI toolkit. Now I'm going to save and we are going to test it out in VR by closing first this window and learning how we can actually interact with this UI. Okay, so to interact with this UI, this is very simple. We already have a ray and a poke configured with the XR origin hands here. And if we have a look at these two components, we have here the XR UI toolkit manager, which contains the XR UI toolkit manager component. If we double click on it, we can see that this is a very simple component, which will simply enable here the UI toolkit support enable. Then we have another important game object, which is the panel input configuration which contain a panel input configuration component. And finally, we have an event system, which contain here an event system used to interact with UI. But what's very important is to disable here the bypass UI toolkit events. And basically this sums up the three things that you need to have in your scene to interact with the UI toolkit. So to sums up the XR UI toolkit manager, the panel input configuration, and finally an event system that contains both the event system and the XR UI input module with a bypass UI toolkit events disabled. And that's it. Now with these three components, we can interact with our UI, but of course we need to make our UI interactable and we can do so by first adding a box collider. Now if I enable the gizmo, as you can see, it by default, it directly takes the shape of our UI, which is very good. And then we can add an XR simple interactable. Everything is already pre-configured for us here, so we have nothing to do. And now if we want to interact with poke as well, we simply need to add an XR poke filter. And there you go. Now everything is down. We should be able to interact with this UI with both Ray and poke, but only one way to find out and it is to click on play. Okay. And here you go. As you can see, it works. I can interact with the beautiful UI that you, we just made with the Ray from the XR origin. So everything is perfect. Now, before finishing this tutorial, there is one last thing that I really want to share with you guys. 
and it is how we can actually trigger some custom event with this new UI. Because right now, if I click on one of the buttons, nothing happens. So how can we trigger some custom behavior with our UI? Okay, so to do this, we can do so by creating a custom component. So let's simply click on add component and create a custom button even component. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is add at the top using unity engine dot UI element. This is of course to get access to the new UI toolkit. And now what we can do is first get the visual element that is like the root of our UI document by doing visual element root equals get component of type UI document and then getting the root visual element. Once we have the root, we can actually get our button. And this is where things get tricky because if we go back to our Unity project and that we reopen the UI builder, the way that we can get each one of these buttons is from their name. And as you can see, they all have the same names, but we can fix that quite easily by selecting one of the button, right clicking, going to rename and rename it button one. Let's do the same for the other with button two. And finally, button three. We can now save, close the UI builder, go back to our script, and then we can get each one of these buttons with button one equals root dot q button and here give the name that we just had. So button one in our case. Now let's do this for the three button with button two, button three, button two, button three. And there we go. Now that we have our button, we can do anything that we want with them. For example, trigger a certain custom function when we click on them. In my case, I will simply add a public reference to a renderer called rend. And what I want is to change the color of this renderer when we click on one of these buttons. For that, we can create a new function called public void set color with color color variable and do rend.color rend.material.color equals color. Beautiful. And now let's call this function by simply doing button one. And then here you can trigger a custom function on click by doing dot click plus equals. And here add a custom function. In my case, it will simply be set color. And here let's do color dot red. Beautiful. We can do the same for the others. So for the second button, let's do color blue. And for the third button, let's do color white. Beautiful, and everything should be good like this. Now we can simply save, go back to Unity. Let's quickly create an object that we can modify. So let's go to 3D object cube. Let's place this one in front of our UI. And now let's simply go back to our UI document and drag our cube over there. And now everything should be good. When we click on one of these buttons, it should turn the cube red, blue, or white. So let's find out if this works by clicking on play. And there we go guys, this is working. When we click on one of the buttons, the cube changed its color. That's awesome. And this wraps up everything that you need to know about using the new Unity UI toolkit in VR. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one. And if you are a VR lover, come check out my Patreon where you can get access to the source code of all of my tutorials and exclusive content like this one hour long tutorials on how to build an XR AI assistant. Again, thank you for watching. A big shout out to the latest Patreon appearing on the screen and see you soon for another video.